All right, all right, all right, all right. Calm down, calm down. Get bloody take your knickers out of a twist. Come, come on. Two thousand people calling my phone this morning saying, "Ranking, you doing coffee and memes today?" Of course, I'm doing coffee and memes today. I do coffee and memes every day. Saying, "Ranking, have you got a sack full of shoe throwers for us?" Yes, I've got a sack full of shoe throwers for us. Lobsters. Say, "Ranking, have you got a browser full of bollocks for us?" Yes, obviously, I've got a browser full of bollocks for us. Yo, kill me with this. Obviously, it's like Rankin. Where's your lobster? It's here. He's here. He's fine. Don't worry about him. Well, like, go on then. Get started. Fine. All right. I will. Steady job. A couple extra potatoes. That's all I want. You're getting on. You're pushing thirty, sluggy. You know, it's time to think about getting some ambition. Oh, I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Don't forget, kid, that what you're trying to do here is to be bright and chipper and entertaining and, and intelligent and sort of glitzy and that's funny and it's 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 kind of cool and it's interesting and it's edgy and all of that. It, it puts that facade of momentary charisma on you and if you don't play that out, you actually fail. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Coffee and Memes on Threshold.fm, on Facebook, on YouTube, and right up very, very close to your face. Like someone in a nightclub emceeing in your ear. I, I Thankfully, have not had that happen in a very, very long time. But I feel like during the early noughties, I've got enough of it to last me a lifetime. Poo-wee! Well, it's Tuesday. We made it through Monday. That's cool. That's pretty decent. Um, I've got some <laughs> got some hot bits for you. Got some hot bits. Got new audio on his new Snake Pit records. Uh, it's called Frog March, and it's a bit of a flip flop flinger. Um, got this Crefect uh, uh, Crefect tune called Intercepting. Uh, which is from a label called uh, Your Mum is Fat or something like that. Uh, I think that they sent it to me on SoundCloud and whoo hoo, wish a stinker. So we're going to play that in a bit. Uh, we're going to play the other side of that Jack Mirror Viper release because Hamish is a good boy and I love him. And uh, got an old forward bit. Well, it's not that old, a few months old, but in you know today's news cycle, that's bloody yesterday's chip paper, isn't it? Christ, still a banger though, still a banger. What, anything else that we've missed out on? Oh, new Bad District bit, which is choice. Oh, and new Gridlock, actually, on on Le Hôpital uh, Records. So that is all worth hanging around for. You going to smash that like button or not? Come on, guys. Hey, like and subscribe at the bottom. Lobsters. No, tell me with this. Anyway, look, I've got a few good bits for you today, actually. Florida couple uh, built drive through window at Mobile Home uh, to sell drugs. That's a bit of fun. Uh, Derbyshire motorist calls police on drink driver, forgets he's also drunk and gets arrested. <laughs> uh, Non-stick frying pans can make your penis smaller. Okie dokie. 76% of Brits don't know about the government's plan to block porn sites. Well, I would say that pretty much 100% of Coffee and Memes listeners know. Um, so, you know, and that really, that's all that matters, isn't it? Uh, Japanese Penis Festival. Uh, people in Scotland are more likely to search for redheads and kilts on Pornhub. <laughs> it, it, it's shocking turn of events. Um Oh, that's the Penis Festival again. Probably don't need that. Uh, life as a male escort. We will get into that. Uh, yes, woman selling nudes that her mum takes for her. That's probably fine, isn't it? Six men in court for flinging poo around a train carriage. That sounds very coffee and memes. Oh, God. What else is there? Oh, no, that's not. Uh, uh, testicle flavoured beer. Exists. And I'll rag on sick shirts for a bit. I will get round to that. Uh, as it is, uh, it's imperative, really. It's, you know, it's, no, not an imperative. It is imperative. I just, I know I said I wouldn't bring them up again. I know, I uh, just, I know that I said I wouldn't bring them up again after all that seagull, seagulls on bag shenanigans. But, yeah, three, okay, look, come on, let's do it, fine. Okay, 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 look, here he is. Uh, the headline goes, Wyoming man has been pulled over by the cops with 30 cow's eyes in his anus. Got the cow's eyes in your anus. Um, <laughs> I 
I knew this sort of thing would happen eventually. When you share your screen uh, and you forget, like if you look at the downloads, got a couple of hot constrict bits then, and then a video called Oral Sex Demon. <laughs> oh, I guess I'm gonna have to. I'd have to. Gonna have to play it. Really? Uh, yeah. Okay. We'll do. It. Uh, all right. Look. I've, okay. Should we do that now? If I put it on that page, I guess that's probably the way to do it, isn't it? Um, this will be fine. Okay, guys, uh, I need to make sure that it's going to come out of the right uh, bits. Okay, so there's going to be a mild amount of faffing. Look, that demo. look, 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 oral sex, oral sex okay, demo. That's you see oral sex, look, oral sex, look, 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 look. You, you hold oral up, sex, hold up, you hold oral up, sex. Up, hold up. Let that yeah, sperm of that man out. Out. Only. out. Out, you demo. Out. Okay, so this is the oral sex demon video that I was downloading. Uh, I that I was going to do something about later in the week, but you know we've seen it now. The genie's out the bottle, isn't it? Okay, someone shared this on the um, uh, Facebook page, Facebook the Threshold Lobster Crew Facebook group, and so here it is. Look that demo. Look, look, oral sex, oral sex demo. You see oral sex. Look, oral sex. Look, 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 look. You, you oral sex. You oral sex. Let that sperm of that man out. Ah! Oh, steam and sperm. Out, you demo. Out. Let, let go, let go, let go. Oh, I hate let that. go. You delivered me two Sundays back, then a demon came with his penis and put it in my oh, mouth. No. And and then he tried, he came again and he slept with me last week. And I, I told the, the pastor that I need deliverance again. And since then, my private part has been itching. It's been itching. Mm. Yes. Well, yeah, it's gone now. Get rid of it. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Speak! Who are you? Who are you? Look at that demo! 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 Who are you? Who are you? Speak! Speak out! Who are you? I'm very confused by it, uh, generally. Uh, my my uh, um, diagnosis would actually be thrush. Uh, I would say, because that can obviously cause an oral, there can be the thrush oral infection, and then also the infection in one's genitalia. Um, so I would say that that's probably the most likely explanation rather than a demon. I, but look, I don't know. Look, it's, I, don't, I don't dabble in the world of demons too often. I just, you know, I'm just a decent, honest, God-fearing chap. And uh, I try and, you know, I try and stay out of trouble. I try and, try and stay, um, you know, fairly... Fairly on the fence when it comes to demons. I think, you know, they're, perhaps they're just misunderstood. Are they even real? I don't know. But it's, uh, it's confusing, isn't it? And uh, I would say, though, if you do feel that you have been, you know, possessed by some sort of oral sex demon, that you should seek medical attention. That's, that's the Coffee and Memes uh, position on that. And uh, I stand by it. Definitely consult a physician or a priest. As the woman, she was doing exactly the right thing. She'd gone to the priest and they were attempting to exorcise it. And, you know, God bless them. Uh, right, look, let's get back to this whole um, uh, sick chirps fiasco. Uh, where are we? Yep, here he is. Um, got the cow's eyes in the anus. Um, surprisingly, this... Uh, uh, surprisingly, this happened in Wyoming and not in Florida. Yada, 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 yada. Okay, it occurred over the weekend when cops pulled over a 51-year-old guy called Roy Tibbet. You Google the name Roy Tibbet. Nothing comes up apart from this article. In the early hours of the morning in a town called Casper for a routine sobriety test. During this, he noticed a bunch of eyeballs trickling down his trousers and immediately arrested him on suspicion of murder as he thought they were human eyeballs. The truth was more unsettling and weird. I don't think it is more unsettling than murder. I think murder is the most unsettling thing there is. Um, though, as Tibbet explained that they were cow's eyeballs that had smuggled out the meatpacking plant that he worked in. Company won't let us take our, our animal scraps, so you got to toss them in the landfill. They're a very wasteful company, so uh, we should be allowed to take scrap meat and other parts home. The company should start a green initiative. I, I don't believe that he, this gentleman here, is the type of gentleman that would use the term green initiative. I'm just, I'm just going to go out on a limb there. Uh, they don't even have recycling at the plant. Again, I do, it just, just something about him. Uh, doesn't doesn't scream our meatpacking plant needs a recycling program. Uh, I put the eyeballs, pictured above, in soups. They're beneficial for erectile dysfunction, which I currently battle. 
Okay, so you're at the side of the road, yeah? Okay, the policeman has pulled you over and he's got all the eyeballs. You got all the eyeballs coming out your ass. Okay, you got all the eyeballs coming out your ass. And uh, they're saying, why you got all the eyeballs coming out of your ass? Well, I turned them into soup officer for erectile... Uh, it's very good for erectile dysfunction, which I currently suffer from. Uh, but they also like the... Uh, but I also like the texture and the taste. I enjoy eating bovine eyeballs and smuggling them out in my colon was the only way I knew how to get them out without potentially getting caught and fired. So anyway, the long and the short of this is you do a brief bit of go Googling and you get Snopes. Now, as much as it pains me to use Snopes. Um, okay, was a Wyoming man found with 30 eyeballs in his anal cavity? False. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then they sort of go into the depth. Uh, but it's, um, yeah, I mean, it's just nonsense. And so Sick Chirps trotting it out. It's got thousands of shares on Facebook. Do they give a fuck? No, they just care about the shares and the potential ad revenue from uh, from the clicks. Uh, you two-bit shitbag hacks. Um, pathetic. I mean, it's, I mean, there are a few other, uh, sort of crappy two bit hack news sites that have also published it. That is presumably where Sick Chirps copied it from. But it's, uh, I mean, you could, I guess there would be an argument that you would just have like a parody website or something, kind of a little bit like The Onion, that you could just make these stories up for. And it's a bit of a laugh, isn't it? You sort of thing you could read while you're on the shitter. And everyone have a bit of fun with it, but no one. But this is just sort of like, look, I appreciate this is not the most harmful of fake news, but fake news nonetheless. And it's just, it's just a bit pathetic, isn't it? It's like, I mean, you could, I mean, you've got an opportunity, particularly when you've got a big audience, to actually, you know, do something half decent, half reputable. But instead, you're just recycling fictional stories about man uh, who didn't have cow's eyes in his ass. Um, rough times, guys. Rough times. Hey, look, to cheer us up, though. Uh, let's have this. Um, go on, then. Let's have this new audio bit. It's called Frog March. It's a bit rowdy. Shout out to Mr. Merck and the fam. Lots of blessings to you today, mate.
Yeah, this is very naughty. Uh, Mr. Audio, you are spoiling us with this one. Yeah, this is Frog March by Audio. It's out now on Snake Pit Records. Audio's new imprint. Audio will be on the show soon. Chat about it all. Find out what's going on. Maybe he's starting a cult as well. Could be. Could be. Last thing we need is a war between the snakes and the lobsters. Yeah, Frog March by Audio. Snake Pit Records. Go to your local art price and pick up a copy of that on cassette. You won't regret it. You will not regret. <clears throat> right, come on in. Let's do this Derbyshire Times story. Um, Derbyshire motorist calls police on drink driver, forgets he's also drunk and gets arrested. Oh, dear. Derbyshire motorist. Okay, yeah, that's the same title again. Uh, you couldn't make this up, tweeted officers are more sassy social media from the police. You couldn't make this up, tweeted officers from Derbyshire Road's policing unit. Uh, after arriving at the scene on J25, off uh, Junction 25, off the M1 today, that being yesterday. Very minor collision at the junction, causing no damage, they said. One driver suspects the other is drunk, so quite rightly calls us. Forgetting he is also drunk. Both arrested. One blue 40, other blue 78. Both drivers are charged, <laughs> were charged to a beer in court. Well, they kept, they kept that one short and sweet, didn't they? Deary me, Derbyshire News, not fucking about. Okay, well, yeah, I don't really know... Pfft, I mean, what can you say about that one? That's just idiocy upon idiocy, isn't it? Uh, Coffee and Reams position on this one. Don't drive drunk. Okay, just putting that one out there. What's this? cocaine fueled Derbyshire motorist. It's probably worth having a look, isn't it? Uh, cocaine fueled Derbyshire motorist is caught over the drug drive limit by police. How are they testing that? Blood or something. Oh, go away. Look, I know I've got an ad blocker on. I've got an ad blocker. Just, oh, you are subhuman scum, Derbyshire Times. That is, that's it. No, done. No, I'm not having it. I, wa- I will not. I will not. <laughs> that's just going to just be... <laughs> I wonder if I can set that to just be like, uh, <laughs> just be on a sort of loop. But just come in like I don't know every fifteen minutes or something when I'm not expecting it. Here. Oh God. Um, okay, let's. Uh, okay, seventy-six percent of Brits don't know about the government's plan to block porn sites. Okay, Tom Woods of the Lab Bible reports, reports, reports. Uh, remember, we mentioned to you a while ago that the UK is about to introduce an age verification system for online pornography. Yes, yes, we do. Well, if you do remember that, you're in the minority. Um, according to the poll, according to a poll, uh, most Brits are blissfully unaware that their a- access to adult content is about to be taken away. I mean, is it? Is this? Is this? It's definitely going to happen. I thought it was just a proposal. Okay, well, let's let's find out. Three quarters of people in the UK are unaware that the new restrictions are even happening, let alone within a matter of weeks. All right, so this is happening on April first. So listen, guys. All I'm going to say is like. People like people are stockpiling stuff in case of a No Deal Brexit, yeah. But I think like I'm personally stockpiling Eastern European Euro funk because you just never know, all right. And the last thing I need is to run out. Um, but something that people haven't considered stockpiling is prawn, you know. So get, get particularly the weirder stuff because I guess you could just um, for the more standards. Well, look, think about it this way, guys. If there's ever a really significant porn shortage, what you can do is you could just draw the porn yourself. You just get a pencil and some paper and just draw a picture of a nudie lady or or an erection, depending on what your personal preference is. Or both. Absolutely fine. Honestly, this is this is a totally shame-free environment. It's just you alone with a pencil and a paper just drawing the innermost erotic thoughts of your mind, just really just being totally free and artistic to draw whatever scenes of utterly, ut- just utterly, just almost kind of Boschian debauchery and just 
take a moment to yourself, just self-care, self-care Sunday, just a nice big art pad with maybe some different colored pencils to just sketch out all of your delights and then to just smash one out to it. Come on, guys. Well, ne as long as we don't run out of things to draw on, realistically, we're never going to run out of pornography, are we? And it's worth thinking about that. Because, you know, if in, in this, this time, you know, in these increasingly polarized times, you know, you've got you've to gotta fall back on, on what's good in life. And being safe in the knowledge that as long as we have drawing materials, we'll never run out of pornography. I think that is, I think we can all get behind that. Anyway, uh, three quarters of people in the UK are unaware of the new restrictions and that they are coming in in a couple of weeks. <coughs> The statistics were gathered uh, by polling company YouGov, uh, who found that a whopping 76% of people in Great Britain had no idea that the porn block was happening. Strangely enough, 67%, uh, once they found out, actually thought it was a good idea. Uh, that being said, uh, on 34% of people, only, th only, oh, on, only, fucking, ah. Get your act together. Tom Woods, seriously. Don't kill me with this Um, it, look. Okay, I'll, I'll just correct it for you, shall I? That being said, only 34% per cent. Right. Couldn't, fucking Nora, man. Look, that's two... It, it's one word. Percent is one word, Tom, Tom Woods. <sighs> People actually think that it will work. Okay. Britain's porn watchers likely to be caught with their pants down from porn block. Um, from, where have you copied and pasted this from? Badly scaled down the image badly um, from the beginning of April a new government policy aimed at preventing children from accessing pornography comes into force that will require all pornographic websites to verify their visitors uh, are aged 18 or over before taking the survey were you aware that this policy was being introduced general population um, it's only 24% were um, every or most day oh porn watching frequency okay People who watched it every day, much more likely to know. Okay. One to three times a week, uh, roughly, actually more likely to know, weirdly. Once or twice a month, much less likely. Uh, less frequently than once a month, about the same. Never, only 15% of people knew. Well, I don't know about this 15% so that say never. I just, they're, well, they might as well just say liars there, mightn't it? Um, <laughs> people who lie on surveys were less likely to know that the porn block is coming in. This is all I'm gleaning from that one. If you're amongst those who don't know, let me explain. Let's just let Tom Woods of the Lab Bible explain. From potentially as early as first as 1 April. Oh my God. He, he properly phoned this one in, Tom Woods. From potentially, did you dictate this into your phone, like into the voice recognition, voice to text function of your phone? From potentially as early as 1 April, Britons will have to prove their age with a valid form of ID, driving license, credit card, passport, etc., to access many adult websites. Well, the issue I have with this one is look, I think I, I definitely think that making porn much harder to access for children is a very good idea. However, what will happen here, potentially, is that all the mainstream legitimate, decent, well, le not sure if legitimate is the right word, but the mainstream, most popular porn sites, uh, your porn hubs, your red tubes, your U porns, etc., will fall into line with this, obviously. Uh, therefore, kids won't be able to get onto those ones. So they'll go looking for ones they can get onto. And those ones that they can get onto are probably much more likely to be the really, really hardcore, awful, fucking nasty shit ones. Because they're not going to be bothered about falling into line with bloody new government policies. So unless the government have managed to get all internet service providers to really do an absolutely amazing job of, you know, blocking everything 
then the kid, the stuff that the kids are going to find, the, all the stuff that's going to be less is going to be the really, really awful stuff. It's like the take, it's like the take all the guns away argument. It's like, okay, so if you if you're going to go, all right, well, we're going to get rid of all the guns in America, and we're going to do a government buyback scheme. So, okay, you bring your guns in, we'll give you cash for them. Who's going to bring their guns in? The responsible gun owners that probably are, that are not likely, not as likely to be the problem. Who's going to not do that? All the criminals, all the other people, all the irresponsible gun owners. So then you're gonna, like, it's 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 complicated. It's difficult. Don't get me wrong. I'm not pro gun, but like, it's you know you have to take, try and take. You have to look at all the. I mean, presumably they've probably looked at it. I've looked at this for approximately three minutes, and that's the conclusion I've come to. Presumably they've had focus groups that have considered this and have thought that you know, but I don't know. Maybe they haven't. Maybe this is just some sort of like I don't know government porn virtue signal where they're like oh, we're, we're really we're really concerned about the youth of today when really they're fucking not they just like to look like they're concerned about it they actually don't give a flying fuck which is much more likely but anyway my two cents on this i've gone down a ranty rabbit hole but you know in for a penny in for a pound if you can't take the worst of me you don't deserve the best of me i don't like i'm not saying this is a bad idea i'm just saying that You've really got to make sure it's blanket coverage, or it's not, or it's actually going to potentially make stuff worse. Okay, good. Right, carry. I'll crack on. I'll see if I can navigate my way through bloody Tom Woods monstrosity of an article. Uh, once they've done that, or okay, yeah. So you verify with a driving license, credit card, or passport. Once they've done that, or bought a so-called porn pass from a participating retailer, you'll be able to access the content. Yeah. So here's the other thing we discussed it last time: is that you'll be able, if you don't want to give your details out online like that, you can go to your local news agents, show them your driving license, and buy a little porn pass, a little pervy porn pass. Buy your little wanking coupon. Yeah. Buy your wank ticket. And I mean, that's going to be a rough spot, isn't it? Uh, can I have um? Uh, 10 bin H silver. Uh, yep. And you got any lot, lot, uh, I'll get uh, two lucky dips on the lottery t- uh, tonight's one, yeah. You got any of them wanking passes? <laughs> yeah, I'll have one of them. Uh, two, one, no. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, and you're going to have to look, matey, who serves you your eggs and your milk and your bread every, like, every couple of days, look him in the eye and go, I want to be able to watch pornography on my computer. Sell me my wanking coupon now. Sell it to me. Maintaining full eye contact the whole, whole way. Um, weirdly enough, over half, 53% of Britain's most uh-huh, prolific porn watchers are unaware of the changes. It's a group of people who watch porn on the internet every day or other day. You'd think they'd have heard. Uh, the changes are aimed at making... Hold on. They just re- repeated the, that was... Is this all what was written above? Anyway, look. Don't, yeah, look, this is the same. Oh, no, this is different. Two-thirds of Britain support the imminent porn block, uh, but just a third think it will be effective. Yeah, well, I guess I'm in that third. No, no, no. I'm in the I'm in the two-thirds. Look, there's a young lady's bottom there, if you're interested. Um, as mentioned earlier, once people get told about the rules, they are broadly supportive. However, a number of people who agree with the changes... Uh, the number of people who agree with the changes decreased based on uh, the amount of time they spend watching porn. Well, look, if you're over 18, though, what's the problem? you just got to stick in a thing and, like, <laughs> you're infringing on my, uh, on my individual rights and liberties to watch pornography without having to give my, to give my age or my address. I need, I need my pornography. Uh, in fact, only 20, uh, 28% of people who watch adult videos every day are in favour of the rules. Who'd have thunk it, eh? Either way, the changes are coming. You better get ready or get registered if it's important to you anyway. Well, like I say, as long as you've got a notepad and some paper, you can you have an infinite supply of porn as long as you have the ink for it. Right, let's get into some more shoes, This is called Intercepting uh, by Crefect. It's on the New Army LP Volume 2 on You So Fat Records. It's a stinker.
Yeah, this is naughty. This might even have she throw out the weight potential. You wouldn't download a car. This porn band's gonna um, stop people getting their vadges out on Twitch. Or is that just a workaround? What if you consider it art? Yeah, exactly. Thanks for that, that Stin, reminding everybody. Um, I mean, you can just, you know, use the Super Chat to send me cash and I'll start getting my kit off and you can get your daily porn hit from that. It's fine, I'm here to help. I'm here to help you circumvent ineffective government policy. <laughs> yeah, man, that's intercepting by Creefac, man. That's a cool, groovy tune, yeah? Yeah, it's a banger, yeah? Okay, good, man. Uh, should we do this old Florida couple routine? Florida couple! Uh, built drive through window at mobile home to sell drugs. Cops. What? Why, what's this deal here, Fox News? It pains me to view your website as it is. Let alone your weird, confusing headlines. Florida couple was arrested last week. Were arrested last week, I believe. Oh, a couple what yeah, up for debate. Uh, last week, after they were caught allegedly selling drugs from a drive through window they constructed out of the side of their mobile home. Uh, funny story, in a way. Uh, they're back in the meow, meow craze, the summer of meow, which was, what, 2009? 2010? 2009, 2010, one of those, sure. Uh, there was a guy in Brighton, in Hanover, in the Hanover area, the hilly Hanover area of Brighton, student central, and he had constructed a, uh, a sort of, um, a, or effectively a drive through a hatch in his front door. Uh, he had extended the size of the post box and had a hatch in there and was selling meow meow out of that. And there was a queue that used to go down the road. Those were wild times. <laughs> they truly were wild times. There was a Vice magazine, uh, a, well, a Vice.com article, um, sort of reminiscing about the summer of the summer of MCAT, the summer of bath salts, the summer of meow. Uh, I might have to have a little dip into that, see what's um, see what's what. Anyway, um, misty watercolored memories. William Parrish Jr. <laughs> and Mackenzie Dobbs uh, of Ocala, Florida, were arrested on the twenty third of August after investigators raided their mobile home following reports of four drug overdoses in the area. Oh, dear. Ocala police said the couple had turned a kitchen window into a drive through so customers would not have to constantly enter and exit their home, potentially drawing attention. Uh, the house had signs directing people to the drive. 
<laughs> been directing people where to drive and indicated whether it was open or closed. Oh, yeah. Last thing we want to do is attract attention. Let's put a drive through sign on it and give people instructions about how to buy drugs. <laughs> <laughs> That's some real crackhead logic there, isn't it? He's got a close sign. Oh, God. Oh, this is horrendous. Oh, you idiots. It's appalling. Get your act together. Uh, we were seeing some overdose... <laughs> Sorry, we were seeing some overdose incidents that were happening in this particular area, specifically at this particular location. There were some heroin sales that were going on there. Subsequently, though, uh, through the investigation, we were able to determine... The product was laced. The product was laced with fentanyl. Bad times. Um, Parish thirty two. Um, Pennsylvania mum charged after giving toddler fentanyl laced drink in sippy cup. Jesus. <sighs> oh God. I will tell you what, man. Looking through the metro this morning, there was some of the most awful, awful headlines and articles of stuff to do with kids that just oh nearly made me cry looking through it so it's some just so awful this is the the, the downside of trying of searching the news every day for banter oh god anyway uh paris 32 was charged with driving under the influence right uh keeping a dwelling used to sell drugs okay possession of drugs with intent to sell and resisting arrest without violence Oh, what was that, running away? Uh, anyway, according to the Marion County Sheriff's Office inmate records, Dobbs, 20, has been charged with keeping a dwelling used to sell drugs, possession of drugs with intent to sell, possession of fentanyl, possession of fentanyl with intent to sell. Court records show. Um, William Paris Sr. told WFTV his son had been trying to get himself straightened out. Get your act together. And maintained reports of over maintained that reports of overdoses were a lie. Okay, uh, Akala is located inland, about sixty six miles west of Dakota Beach. Uh, lovely stuff. Okay, well, I mean, you can't fault them on ingenuity, can you? I mean, you know, they're they're on the hustle, but heroin laced with fentanyl is an absolute disaster, really. Uh, non. Okay, should we do the nonstick frying pans making? Um, uh, making pet penises smaller. Uh, okay, non-stick frying pans can make your penis smaller. Studies say. Uh, frying pans might be having a negative effect on your sausage. Banter. Uh, nice one, New York Post. Uh, a new study found that a chemical commonly found in non-stick pans and fast food wrappers may have a significant impact on, downturn, uh, on endowment and can result in smaller schlongs. Wow, really, really going for it on this one, New York Post. Uh, are the New York Post of legitimate? Am I just confusing them with the New York Times? Are the New York Post like the sort of um, New York version of the Sun? Or, I don't know. Um, the research, which took place in Italy, found that those who have been exposed to oh, here we go, uh, perfluorocal, rocklel, uh, roll kyle, perfluo, per. I'm just going to call it perf. Perf compounds, also known as PFCs. Right, thank you. Okay, PFCs had significantly smaller eggplants hmm. uh, compared to those who hadn't, as well as lower semen quality. Oh, dear. PFCs and chemicals commonly used as water and oil repellents in cookware and textiles. Uh, according to the study published in the Journal of Clinical uh, Endocrinology and Metabolism, adult males are more likely to accumulate the chemical in their body for an unknown reason, meaning the chemical could have a larger effect on them uh, than other than another population. Yeah, so there was a documentary that's on either Netflix or um, BBC iPlayer where they they found that basically companies that made like Teflon and like there was something in the Teflon production process that was basically giving all the workers cancer. Absolutely horrendous. And so there was a big class action lawsuit to try and take them, to, to try and, you know, sue them for this, for basically putting the workers at risk. And so they needed to try and find people that did not have this particular chemical in their blood. So they could do a comparison for um, people that did have it and people that didn't and what the 
you know, cancer rates were. They could not find anyone who didn't have it in their blood. They had to go, they, the, the, like, they traveled the entire world trying to find someone that did not have this chemical in their blood. And they eventually managed to find some blood that had been taken from Vietnam veterans before they went to fight in Vietnam. And it had been kept on ice since then. And the thing hadn't been invented uh, at that point. So they had they only had that. That was the only blood they had that did not have traces of this chemical in. <laughs> Absolutely terrifying. Uh, researchers examined... 383 male high school students, including 212 who had been exposed to it uh, in northeast Italy through June 2017 and May. They took participants' blood to measure sexual hormones, examined semen samples, and yes, took several measurements of their growlers, of their growers, sorry, including length circumference, testicular volume, and anogenital distance, otherwise known as uh-huh, the Kendall region. Stinker's Bridge, I presume they're talking about. The taint, I think. And boy, do these chemicals have an effect on boys. Participants who weren't exposed to PFCs had tall boys with an average of... T- <laughs> like, I think it's a little bit overkill on the, on the, uh, on the, <laughs> on the euthanisms here in New York Post. Had tall boys with an average length of 3.94 inches compared to an average of 3.44 inches. It's a very small sample size, though. Um, 3.4 inches of those who had exposed men uh, were also one-fifth of an inch less girthy. Study authors call this a substantial impact on human male health, uh, one which could lead to issues of male fertility. Well, not good if it is, but I think it would be nice to see a bigger study on that. I do. I, I am concerned about the quality of my jism. Anyway, look, God, right, okay, let's have this other Jack Mirror bit. It's a nice bit of gear. It's called Reset. It's on Viper. It's the other side of Utopia. And uh, it's absolutely fine by me. Literally fine. Up, Rob. Shout out to Boston Crew. This isn't perfect
Lovely bit of gear there, Jack Mirror reset. Good boy. Yeah. Six men in court for flinging poo around a train carriage. Christ. Six men appeared in court today, charged with getting undressed on a train and then flinging poo around the carriage, hitting a female passenger. <sighs> God's sake. The group, aged 21 to 27, are accused of loudly, uh, are accused of loudly discussing their sexual exploits and asking passengers to expose themselves. They also allegedly defecated in a public area on the train before throwing feces around, hitting a female passenger. That is truly disgusting. Uh, they are all accused of outraging public decency while travelling between Bath Spa Station in Somerset and Chippenham on July 11th, 2018. The group appeared in Swindon Court today. Toby Clark, 22, of Wiltshire. Bobby Clifford, 21, of Chippenham. Previously pleaded guilty at Swindon Crown Court. They were released from court on Friday on bail to be sentenced at a later date. Josh Dolman, 26, of Wiltshire. And Edward McCormack, 25, of Chippenham. Both pleaded not guilty on Friday to the charges. They will appear back at uh, at Swindon Crown Court on the 1st of July to face trial. Um, This is... uh, They sound like very naughty boys. Uh, Alistair Ellis, 25, and Andrew McCabe, 27, both of Chippenham, did not enter pleas uh, to the charges and are due back in court on May 9th. Seventh man, Dominic Patton, 21, of Chippenham, was unable to appear... Uh, before court, as he is completing his university studies in the United States, uh, there is a reporting uh, there is a reporting restriction on the charges Patton faces. I want no more details about. It. Well, I mean, there's plenty of details there. Right? Okay. Like, first up, don't take your clothes off. Start lobbing your tod around. You're not a monkey. Um, just like what? <sighs> Millennials? Are they millennials or are they Gen Z? No, they're millennials, aren't they? <clears throat> Alright, I'm not going to talk to an entire generation because of the actions of five fucking morons. I mean, Jesus Christ, though. Like, what? Like, what's going on? You're on, a, you're on a train from Bath Spa to Chippenham. I've got an idea. Let's... I've got an idea, boys! Why don't we take... Why don't we derobe? Why don't we shed off our... <laughs> shed off our our restrictive clothing, and get back to nature on this train to Chippenham. Yes, what a wonderful idea. Let's discuss our sexual exploits. Oh, do you remember when I eloped with Molly for the afternoon and put penis to vag under a tree? Oh, such oh, such wonderful times, such majestic beauty. Oh, I remember now the look on her beautiful, pale, freckled face. Oh, delightful it was. Oh, my tall boy rose with such Pride. Oh, incredible. I've got an idea, boys. Let's throw our tods at people. Yes, let's hurl poo at female passengers. Let's demand other people take their clothes off. What the hell's going on? Are they all on GHB or something? Like, seriously, how does this happen? Like, because, I mean, I understand people get drunk and get leery and stuff, but this is a this is like a few steps further, isn't it? All right, people get drunk and they, you know... Uh, take the clothes off. Okay, well, right. you got drunk. Okay, now you've taken a shit on the floor. Okay, that's a pretty significant step forward, isn't it? Okay, now you now you're throwing that around. Put them in the stocks. 
I think. Uh, this is another one for the stocks, I reckon. <laughs> and then you get they get to you get to throw Todds at them. Ah, <coughs> uh, yeah. Uh, pff, what what you say, really? Uh, outraging public decency is a common law charge that carries an unlimited prison sentence or an unlimited fine. Jesus, that's a bit concerning, isn't it? Like, uh, I mean, because. What I mean, even like murder doesn't murder have a maximum prison sentence? Uh, right. Okay. Well, all right. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I will do my best to try and continue my life within the boundaries of uh, English common law and not, not uh, risk being charged with an unlimited prison sentence for outraging public decency. I mean, I wonder what what constitutes outraging public decency. Windmilling in a McDonald's would that be would that be outrageous? Probably is, isn't it? I mean, it'd be rough rough if they were like, "Yep, forty years." What? I just I just for windmilling. Yeah. Well, sorry, unlimited prison sentence. Uh, shit's uh, post Brexit. Shit's getting draconian. What are you gonna do? Dang. I wonder what the comments are saying on this. They should sentence them to a custodial term to be served behind bars in a zoo, where they can be visited like other monkeys and stared at. They should be naked like all monkeys are. They obviously like acting like them, so it would be poetic justice. To be honest, that's not that far from what I said about putting them in the stocks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> carry on. Care to quote which law would allow such a sentence? <laughs> I'm afraid you don't have sufficient knowledge of English common law. Where exactly in the law books does it say that you can have custodial sentences in zoos where they would be forced to be naked and rub around like the monkeys that you believe them to be? Show me the law. Citation needed. Citation needed. Do better. Uh, <laughs> Hassan says, sounds like I just had fun. <laughs> it's a bit of fun, isn't it? Boys will be boys. They're just throwing tods around. Sarah Brown thinks maybe they ought to propose a law that would allow people to sentence other people to... To, to be knocked up in a zoo. Oh, dear. Oh, baby Jesus. Um, all right, look, to play us out, let's have this... Um, all right, look, what have we got? We've got this forward bit. And uh, I'm actually going to play this uh, Hyper Drone by Bad District. It's wildy. Hundred percent this is a contender. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
<laughs> oh. Holy moly. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. I'm, I'm, I'm playing this out. Oh, yeah, fun times this Saturday in Rotterdam. I'll be playing at Mr. Thrasher's birthday party. It's called like Thrash Fest or something like that. Uh, it's at Worm? No, Revolt? I'll find out, let you know. Anyway, Rotterdam this Saturday. It's going to be wild. Playing this, definitely. That's Hyperdrome by Bad District. <laughs> Wee! Yep, I mean, that so far, I mean, it's, I know it's only Tuesday, but that's Sheath Row of the Week for me so far. So, Jesus, if something comes in and you subs that, man, we're going to have a. Well, that's going to that's gonna be great because it'll mean there's an even more of a shoe thrower. Imagine that. Anyway, look, listen, guys, I'm going to try and wrap this up quickly. Next, coming up next at 11 o'clock is um, uh, Parallaxed is bringing his first show in. Oh, 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 I've got a minute and 40 seconds. Uh, Parallaxed is bringing his show. It's called Roll Call. So hang around for the next hour on Threshold.fm to listen to that. It's his first show. It's going to be really good, playing all things that are good, drum and bass and everything in between. Um, shout out to the VIP list which is everyone supporting on thre- uh, on Patreon. Um, if you want to support us on Patreon, that'd be absolutely amazing. You would be helping us out. You also get a free ranking audio pack of DMB drum hits this month if you're a Patreon supporter. Um, so shout outs to Oliver Hooper, Nicholas Gonclaus, Tom Ryan, Reese Moss and Squidgy Beats Parsons, Paulie Hutton, Kieran R, Michael Kozitsky, Matthew Tompkins, Dave Long, Joel Potter, Cole Murphy, Sam Howard, Tony J, Richard Patterson, Jack Murphy, Tom Cam, Stephen Harris, Matthew Bullard, Zara Pickle, Jerome Van Thunderbutt, Mike Pye, Anthony Walker, Lily Unsub, Richard France, Thomas Hall, Joe Ryder, Andrew Harshall Beck, John Finnison, BDR Crew, Peter Blashford, Austin Grief Cooper, Kennedy Lightfield, Ryan Glazer, James Parry, Dave Thompson, Hendo Bartendo, Lady Squiffington, Liam the Menace Underwood, Dan fucking Morris, a guy with no STDs, Justin Mercer, Ames MC, Josh Williams, Rob Humphrey, Shibby T, Coco Shiva, Dan Elton, Torren Wilmore, Mr. Pope, Dark Progressive Side Trials is actually better, superior to drum and bass, Nicholas Lawsey, Damon Rayner, Chris Breaks the Build, uh, Carissa Barth Elson, uh, Odin Bates, Lee Fuller, D, Daniel Je- uh, Genvy, uh, Flaxis, and Alexander Cassidy. If you want your name on that list, support us on Patreon and you will get your name on that list read out at the end of every show. Goodbye. I love you all. Uh, I will see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. For more coffee and memes, more shoe throwers, more ridiculous news, more all things that are good, I will post the Patreon link in the comments now. If you want to support, that would be amazing of you. Hang around now for Parallax with Roll Call. It's going to be every Tuesday at 11. He's a good boy. He plays good music. Can't argue with that. Lots of love. I'll see you later. Okie dokie, goodbye then, goodbye then, goodbye.